I'm Natalia Loback, and this is Change Course. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make change. For those of you who've been following along the Change Course podcast for a little while, You might remember an episode that I did back on November 15th called, What Game Are You Actually Playing? And this speaks to a theme that I've touched on in the last couple of weeks around resistance and really entrenched and difficult resistance. So back in November, I was talking about an experience that one of my coaching clients had. And I'll be completely honest, I don't do a lot of executive coaching or executive advisory around change, specifically because I typically do it as part of the work that I do with a larger change initiative. So I'm typically working with executives and management within the organization to work through the challenges, but I'm also helping them set up a really successful change program while we're working through the transformation. So I'm not just working with executives. I work with various people within the organization at a bunch of different levels, all the way down to the front line in many and in most cases. But I was asked to take on some very specific clients over the last year. And this really speaks to some of the things that I've been noticing and that I've been speaking about in some of the other social media posts I've been making lately around people being asked to to step up into change leadership roles. And that this hasn't been the case in the past. Typically in the past, When I would come into an organization, I would come in as a transformation specialist by virtue of the fact that I was there, it meant that there was disruption coming. I talked a little bit about that in the last episode. I love change. Give that one a listen if you haven't already. But here's the thing. I've also been approached by a few operations leaders over the last year that have been asked to step up into the role of a change leader. And this is a huge stretch for many very talented and very skilled operations leaders. So long story short, I've been working with this one executive for about nine months now, and we've been focusing on implementing a new program in their organization. And this organization is a multi-billion dollar multinational organization. It's very large. And with that comes very entrenched systems, a huge amount of bureaucracy and difficulty around making change. By nature of this system, it's difficult to make change. It's not just the people that we're working with. It's really the flavor and the sense of the organization. So this executive I've been helping has been trying to, for the last year, implement a brand new program. It's a new way of doing things. It really changes some of the power dynamics in the organization. It changes some of the power dynamics in the region that they're working in. And it's very disruptive, but it's for the betterment of the organization as a whole. It's a huge positive change that will have incredible benefit for the people that they're working with, as well as for the organization as a whole. And it really speaks to where the organization is going. It's linked directly to the strategy. So it's hugely important. Over the last nine months, however, There have been a number of challenges making headway into this team 
and making headway into this change in this organization. So in November, we were talking about one of the stakeholders who was very firmly against the change. And we started to unpack why that was. Um, And this stakeholder is a difficult one. And this is where we get into talking about personal resistance. 99% of the time, you can deal with change resistance by dealing with the systems, by dealing with the group dynamics, by looking at power dynamics, by using connected change. You can do all of that and make it most of the time. Every once in a while, though, you're going to come across a very resistant stakeholder who's in a position of power. This doesn't happen all the time, but it does occasionally happen where that person is just diametrically opposed to the change for personal and professional reasons, but they also have a lot of power in the organization. So they have a large department that reports into them, or they have a lot of relationships, or they have a wealth of power and influence. And so when you're coming up against resistance that takes this particular form, you got to go outside the playbook. In November, I talked about encouraging this executive to have a one-on-one conversation with this resistant individual, take them off site, reduce the power dynamics. So when you're thinking about having these types of difficult conversation, there's like a whole body of research and a whole body of stuff around doing difficult conversations well. Yes, and this is a particular type of very difficult conversation. So when you are faced with an individual like this that has a lot of power, you've got to have the conversation in a way that either elevates your own power such that you are having the conversation as equals or reduces that person's power such that you're having the conversation as equals. This is why you want to do the conversation one in person and two, not on their turf. When I say not on their turf, I mean not in their office, not in the office space. You want to take that conversation and move it outside. I suggested going out somewhere, go for lunch, go for coffee, whatever is your flavor of extracurricular office activity. Uh, I would recommend staying away from the pub, like don't bring alcohol into this. This is like not a good idea. But what you do want to do is make sure that it's a comfortable neutral space, but that you can also have a private conversation. So like Starbucks, not the right answer, because it's far too busy, far too crowded, you're far too likely to run into somebody that you know, that's going to off your game. You want to do this in a quiet location away from everyone else, somewhere you can have a private conversation, but it's also comfortable. So pick your location well, do some research, really think about it and be strategic about what you choose. I talked about the type of conversation that he needed to have with this person. And I had some specific advice around just laying it out in terms of like, it's going to happen whether you like it or not. And you have a choice here to get on this train or not. At the time in November, when the executive and I talked about this, they were a little bit uncomfortable with this idea. It took them a little while to warm up to it. (laughs) And so here we are in February, the end of February, and this is going to be posted in March, uh, most likely when you hear it. But What happened was a few things. So when we talked about this in November, interestingly, and I think this is good advice for anybody who might be seeking to have a conversation like this one, the executive looked around and really evaluated the state of their relationships and the state and the relative power that they held compared to this individual that they needed to confront. 
And at the time, they felt like they didn't have quite enough in order to be able to have that conversation. They felt that the power balance was still tipped in the other person's favor. And so over the past few months, they have made some important strides in leveling that power and balance in terms of building those lateral lateral relationships, building those upward relationships. There have been some changes in the organization that have been favorable for this executive in terms of alignment of power, in terms of alignment of influence. So as there were some musical chairs that happened among the group that was just above, so the very senior executive group that was just above this particular executive, the alignment of power shifted in their favor ever so slightly. The other thing is that they discovered what the weakness was of the resistant individual. And they also discovered something very important that I've talked about in the other episodes. And that is the what's in it for me. And so through cultivating those relationships and through really understanding and talking about this challenge of resistance with others and opening up and being vulnerable about the challenge that they were having with this particular individual, they were able to uncover that incredibly important piece of information around, well, what's in it for them? What do they want? What's something that they want and how can I help them with it? And so finally, the executive felt like they could have this conversation with the resistant individual. And I have to tell you that they followed the playbook that I laid out for them. They had the conversation that needed to be had and it went in their favor. They were able to take down the resistance in such a way that it wasn't creating another enemy that it didn't create resentment and anger, but it actually created a way for them to move forward. One of the most important things that we need to realize as change leaders is, yes, we do need to be approachable. We do need to be empathetic. We do need to build those really strong relationships. And when we talk about connected change, this is what it's all about. But you're also that person who's bringing change. You're a disruptor. It's going to make people uncomfortable and it's going to make people unhappy. And when you're dealing with a situation where you have individuals who are highly resistant, highly powerful, but highly resistant to your change, You're not there to make friends. You're there to make change. And so it's not always going to be about winning the person over. It's not always going to be about convincing them that the change is, you know, what they want or, you know, paternalistic kind of coming at them and being like, this is the best for you. That doesn't work. And truly, when you realize that, It's, yes, it's about who you're friends with. Yes, it's about what relationships you have. Yes, it's about all of those things and the influence that you can garner. But at the end of the day, when you're dealing with this type of powerful resistance, you're not there to make friends. You're there to make change. And this is sometimes the hardest thing that change leaders have to come come to terms with is that not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to be your friend but you can still make incredible change and you can still be incredibly successful if you don't always have that. If you haven't listened to what game are you actually playing, uh, definitely go back and listen to it. It's worth a listen. I talk about the strategy that I gave my executive uh, client and talked a little bit about the kind of conversation that they needed to have. They took that advice and they made it their own and they 
worked through a couple different things uh, in order to set themselves up for success in this conversation. I have to be honest, there's a significant amount of planning that goes into it. You don't just fly into someone's office off the cuff and have this conversation. It takes a lot of background preparation and work to make this happen effectively. And you need to be ready. But it's possible. So if you are on the verge of having a conversation like this, or you need to deal with somebody who is highly resistant, what changed for this executive, they were able to see that they had shifted the balance of power in such a way that they really felt like they were equal to this powerfully resistant person. And they also figured out the what's in it for them. What's in it for me? What's in it for you? And how can we find a way to negotiate and maybe barter a deal, figure out a way to move together forward and that the change is going to happen whether they liked it or not. So good luck and let me know if you have had success dealing with highly resistant individuals and what has worked for you. I'd be so curious to hear about it and definitely go back and listen to what game are you actually playing? And I love change from last week because it'll give you a little bit more context around some of the other things that I mentioned in this episode. Good luck. And remember, you're not here to make friends. You're here to make change. Thank you for listening. If you liked what you heard, I invite you to like, share, rate, and subscribe because it helps others find us. Change Course is brought to you by Chart House Advisory Services and ConnectedChange.com. Our music is Levity by Emily Clausen. Show notes have moved. We're now at ConnectedChange.com. So visit us there under the Change Course podcast page, and you'll find a list of all the resources that I've mentioned here today. While you're visiting us, sign up for the Change Navigator newsletter. You'll keep on top of all things change, and every month we are sharing exclusive content and resources only with our subscribers. So don't miss out. Sign up at connectedchange.com. Thank you for listening, and remember, it's never too late to change course.